Hi, we are studying numerical methods for computing eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a given matrix. In this, we have introduced power method in the last class and also we learnt convergence theorem for power method. In this class, we will study a small variant of power method called inverse power method. Let us first recall a result from linear algebra which states that if lambda is an eigenvalue of an invertible matrix A, then 1 by lambda is an eigenvalue of A inverse. This is not very difficult for us to see. You just take lambda as the eigenvalue of a matrix A, then you can write A into V is equal to lambda V, where V is an eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda. Right? Since A is invertible, you can write V is equal to lambda times A inverse into V. Right? That implies A inverse into V is equal to 1 by lambda times b. Here you can note that there is no change in the eigenvector, only the eigenvalue becomes the reciprocal of the eigenvalue of the matrix A. Right? So, that is uh, very important for us to note. Using this theorem, we can in fact compute the smallest eigenvalue of a matrix A when I say smallest eigenvalue, it should be smallest in the absolute value. Say for instance, suppose we have a matrix A whose eigenvalues are rearranged such that modulus of lambda 1 is greater than or equal to modulus of lambda 2 and so on up to lambda n where mod lambda n is strictly less than mod lambda n minus 1. Now, you can see that if A has such a eigenvalues, then lambda n which is the smallest eigenvalue is unique. right? That is the only eigenvalue which is smallest in this sense. Now, let us see how to compute this eigenvalue lambda n using power method. For that, what we will do is instead of applying power method to A which will capture the dominant eigenvalue, now we will apply the power method to A inverse. Why we do that? Well, we have seen from the above theorem that if lambda n is the smallest eigenvalue of A, then 1 by lambda n will be the dominant eigenvalue of A inverse. right? That makes us to apply power method on A inverse in order to compute 1 by lambda n and therefore, we can obtain the smallest eigenvalue of A. That is the idea. Remember, once we compute 1 by lambda n, the power method applied on A inverse will also capture an eigenvector corresponding to 1 by lambda n that is the same as the eigenvector corresponding to lambda n also. right? So, in that way we can obtain the smallest eigenvalue of A and a corresponding eigenvector of the eigenvalue lambda n. right? So, that is the interesting part of power method and this way of computing the smallest eigenvalue of a matrix is what we call as the inverse power method. Now, let us give the iterative procedure for inverse power method. You can see that there is nothing much difference in inverse power method when compared to power method. The only difference is instead of applying the power method to the matrix A, now we will be applying it to A inverse. That is, for every iteration, we will compute y k plus 1 as A inverse x k. Remember in power method, we will 
define y k plus 1 is equal to a into x k right, but here we will apply a inverse to get y k plus 1. Well, this is not something which is straightforward for us because we are given the matrix A right. Now, in order to compute y k plus 1, we need to invert the matrix A which may be computationally costly. So, what we can do is you can write this equation as a into y k plus 1 equal to x k. Here you can observe that once you choose x naught, you will plug in x naught on the right hand side which is a known vector and you will then solve this linear system to obtain the unknown y k plus 1. That is a major difference in inverse power method when compared to the power method. This complicated step is not there in power method because y k plus 1 is just defined as a into x k. x k is known to us and a is also given to us therefore, y k plus 1 can be explicitly computed from there whereas, in inverse power method y k plus 1 has to be computed by solving this linear system. That is we have to solve this linear system y 1 once you have this then you will have x 1 and that has to be then taken as the right hand side to get y 2 and so on right. So, if you see here the right hand side vectors will only change right whereas, the coefficient matrix A will remain unchanged. Therefore, what you can do is you go for a LU factorization because once you do the LU factorization A is equal to L into U, then the system A y is equal to x can be solved by first doing a forward substitution L z is equal to x and that gives you z, then we can plug in that into u y is equal to z. So, you bring that to the right hand side and that gives us the required vector y. We have learnt it in one of our previous classes where we have discussed LU factorization. You just recall that. So, the advantage of going for LU factorization is that once you make the factorization L into u for the matrix A, then at every iteration you just have to plug in the right hand side vector and do one forward substitution and one backward substitution you will get your y. That will be computationally relatively cheaper. So, once you get this y k plus 1, rest of the algorithm remains the same as we did in the power method. What you have to do? You take this vector y and find the maximum norm of that and in whichever index the maximum norm is achieved, you take that value of the y coordinate and define that as mu k plus 1. For instance, if y k plus 1 is equal to say minus 2, 3 and minus 5, then your capital J which is nothing but the minimum of all the J's at which the maximum norm is achieved. So, here it is achieved only at the third coordinate. Therefore, mu k plus 1 will be y 3 k plus 1. In this particular example, it is minus 5. So, this is just an example. So, in that way only you have to choose mu k plus 1 once you have mu k plus 1, well you can find the x k plus 1 very easily by taking y k plus 1 and divide it by mu k plus 1, which will be a unit vector. right? So, we have seen all this when we were discussing power method and this is the iterative procedure for the inverse power method. The only difference and the complication is in computing y k plus 1. 
otherwise all these steps remains the same as in the power method. Well, the next question is if these sequences that is sequence mu k and sequence x k if both these sequences converge then where do they converge that is the question. In a sense we have already answered this question, but we will make it more precise. Of course, we have to keep in mind that the initial guess x naught should be chosen in such a way that c 1 is not equal to 0. Right? What is c 1? c 1 is nothing but the coefficient in the representation of x naught in terms of the eigen vectors right? c 1 v 1 plus dash 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 up to c n v n in that the coefficient c 1 should be non 0 that is for the theoretical reason, but assume that everything went well with our choice of x naught then our question is where these two sequences will converge. Well, the sequence mu k will converge to the dominant eigenvalue of a inverse which is nothing but the reciprocal of the smallest eigenvalue of a in our rearranged form it is lambda n therefore mu k will converge to 1 by lambda n right then where does the sequence xk converge xk will converge to an eigen vector of lambda n remember it will converge to an eigen vector of 1 by lambda n which is of course the same as the eigen vector of lambda n also let us see an example let us take the matrix a given like this i'm just giving you only four digits after the decimal place well as i told you we prefer to first decompose the matrix a into l into u i have just taken the do little factorization you can just observe it here all the diagonal elements are 1 right so i have just taken the do little factorization for a so once you have l and u then a into y equal to x can be done with a forward substitution and one backward substitution and at each iteration you can get the vector y once you get the vector y then you will look for that coordinate of y at which the maximum norm is achieved if it is achieved at multiple coordinates then you will take the one which is with the minimum coordinate right so in that sense the maximum norm is achieved at the first coordinate of y1 and therefore mu1 is given by minus 2.14 remember it should be minus not plus okay and once you get that then simply take x1 as y1 divided by mu1 right so that is your x1 and that is given by this and once you have x1 again you plug in x1 into l into u into y1 is equal to x1 right a forward substitution and a backward substitution will give you y2 sorry this is y2 right so you will get y2 from y2 again you will find the coordinate at which the maximum norm is achieved that is mu2 and then you divide mu2 y2 by mu2 you will get x2 now you repeat this process i am just going ahead with the iteration you can observe that mu is converging slowly to the number 1.63 remember if mu is converging to 1.63 it means what it is actually converging to 1 by lambda 3 right what is lambda 3 well we have not given what are all the eigen values of a therefore we do not know that is the smallest eigen value of a right when i say smallest it is the smallest value of all the eigen values in the absolute sense right 
Therefore, this is for us given as 1.63. When you take the reciprocal of that, that gives you 0 0.61. And what is the corresponding eigenvector? Well, for eigenvector, you do not need to do anything, it just comes as it is. The eigenvector is taken as minus 0 0.8, 1, and 0 0.03. So, this is uh, the smallest Eigen value of the matrix A and a corresponding Eigen vector of this Eigen value is given like this and this is how the inverse power method will go on. Well, for this we have chosen the initial guess as x naught is equal to 1, 1, 1. I am sorry, I forgot to mention this. The next question is, Okay, we learnt how to capture the dominant eigenvalue of a matrix and the smallest eigenvalue of a matrix. Now, is there a way to find some of the other eigenvalues of A also? That is the question. Well, this can be done by shifting the matrix A appropriately and that results into shifted inverse power method. Let us try to understand what is shifted inverse power method. Assume that we are interested in capturing an eigenvalue lambda j and one of its corresponding eigenvectors say v j. Now, what you do is you choose a new some real number new such that mod lambda j minus new is strictly less than mod lambda i minus nu where i ranges from 1 to n with i not equal to j. It means you try to find a nu such that when you take this quantity that will be the smallest value of all such quantities when applied to all other eigenvalues of the matrix A. Well, practically this is not possible to get because simply we do not know what is lambda j. However, in certain situations we may use Grashgorian disk to get an estimate of nu. For instance, suppose your matrix A is such that the Grashgorian disk or something like this, disk 1, disk 2, and so on, this 3 and then this 4 like that, this 5 like that and then in between you have a small disk which is disjoint from here and you want to find this eigenvalue, let us call this as our x lambda j. In such cases, you know how to choose your nu. Say you take this interval and Suppose this interval is very small, then you have an idea of how to choose this nu, right. So, like this in certain restricted situations, you may be able to choose such nu's using Grashgorian theorem. If such a favorable situation is not happening with the matrix A, then you can also try with a transpose sometimes that may give you a better information about how the eigenvalues are distributed. So, if such a favorable situation happens then one may go to use shifted inverse power method otherwise it is not that easy for us to use this method in any practical situation. Okay. Assume that we got this new somehow then how to compute lambda j is our question now. Once you have such a nu, then probably by looking at this, you can get an idea of how we are going to capture lambda. Well, what you can do is you apply the inverse power method to a minus nu i. So, this is called the shifted matrix. and you apply inverse power method to this matrix. Inverse power method is applied to A minus 
nu i that is equivalent to saying that apply power method to a minus nu i inverse right that is the idea we do not need to give the procedure for this because it is just the same as what we have given in the inverse power method only thing is instead of a inverse now we have to put a minus nu i inverse that is the only difference well let us consider this example now once you have this you will have to use a appropriate nu as i told you this is generally not possible perhaps if you are very lucky you may get an idea of how to choose this nu from Grashgorian disks of either A or A transpose. Well, I will leave it to you to think how to do that for some appropriate matrices. We will give you some such matrices in exercise problems. But here to keep our discussion very simple, let us know what are all the eigenvalues and the corresponding eigenvectors of this matrix A. These are given by lambda 1, lambda 2 and lambda 3 and the corresponding eigenvectors are given here. Now, let us try to capture lambda 2 and eigenvectors of lambda 2. Let us see how this is going to happen. For that, we have to choose a nu, right. Let me choose nu as minus 2.4. You can choose any number in such a way that lambda 2 minus nu is strictly less than lambda 1 minus nu and this is strictly less than lambda 3 minus nu also. Okay. So, this choice of nu is going to work therefore, I chose like this you can also choose any value and now we have to apply the inverse power method for a minus nu i that is a plus 2.4 i. You can clearly see that the eigenvalues of a minus nu i are given like this. Now, we have to find the LU factorization of a minus nu i. I have gone for the Doolittle factorization you can go for either Gaussian elimination or crude factorization or even if the matrix is symmetric and positive definite you can go for Cholsky's factorization also right. But I have gone here for Doolittle factorization as per this the lower triangular and the upper triangular matrices are given like this and the iterations are given like this. I have stopped this iteration procedure at the fifth iteration because you can see that from the fourth iteration to fifth iteration there was no much improvement at least to the number of digits that we have shown here. That is why I have stopped up to here. If you want more accurate then you have to go for more iterations that is the only need here, but I am happy with this because it is just an illustration. So, I stopped here. Therefore, your iteration mu k sequence is converging to remember it is going to converge to 1 by lambda 2 minus nu right. Remember we are now working with shifted matrix. Therefore, your mu k is going to converge to 1 by lambda 2 nu and since mu phi is given by minus 7.61 you can see that 1 by mu phi is something like of course 1 minus 1 by 7.61 that is in my calculation approximately equal to minus 0.13 one four, right. So, that is going to be approximately equal to lambda 2 minus nu, right, because mu is going to converge to lambda 2 minus nu. Therefore, 1 by 
mu k will converge to lambda 2 minus nu. I have just stopped at the fifth iteration. Therefore, I am going to consider this value as a approximate value to lambda 2 minus nu. But remember nu is taken as minus 2.4 right. Therefore, lambda 2 is equal to minus 0 0.1314 right plus nu that is nothing but minus 2.4 and that is equal to minus 2.5314. So, that is the lambda that we are trying to obtain from the shifted inverse power method. Let us see what is the value of lambda that we have taken previously that is also approximately the same it is minus 2.5313 what we got is minus 2.5314 right. So, we are pretty good in our approximation and the corresponding eigen vector captured by our shifted inverse power method is 1 comma minus 0 0.06 comma 0 0.04. You can also see that it will be a scalar multiple of the corresponding eigen vector that we have chosen in our first slide. Right? So, this gives us an idea of how we may capture other eigenvalues of a given matrix. But there is a serious disadvantage in this approach that we do not know how to choose this scaling parameter nu. Apart from that the method is very interesting. With this we will finish our discussion or power methods. I thank you for your attention.